Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa and now to a first uh, major conversation this morning. Uh, the race to the All Progressives Congress convention hasn't been smooth um, following intra-party crises, especially uh, court cases against its national leadership, uh, as well as in some state chapters uh, where you have parallel elected executives. Reprieve only recently came the way of a Governor Maima Labuni led Keteka, an extraordinary convention planning committee of the party, following the collapse of a factional CECPC led by Prince Mustafa Audu um, of the uh, Young Progressives Movement. The convention slated for February 26 uh, will elect national officers for the party, but there seems to be no clear plan as to how to do this, especially for the position of national chairman, which is very important in the scheme of things as far as 2023 is concerned. The different blocks that form the party um, are, are torn between whether to have a consensus candidate or not, uh, with members of the two leading blocks that form the party, the defunct Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, and the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, uh, set to be in a battle for the soul of the party. Can the All Progressives Congress resolve these issues in order to have a smooth Congress? I'm glad to say we're joined by um, a member of the All Progressives Congress, Honorable Sharif Banki, to discuss this. Uh, Honorable Banki, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, and nice to be with you. All right. Um, um, what's the issue regarding this, this uh, uh, um, you know, consensus or no consensus candidate for the chairmanship of the party? And how important is that? Is it is it that you have, um, or is that role of chairmanship of the party? We hear it's uh, it's between the um, the legacy parties, uh, CPC and uh, the ACN bloc in the All Progressive Congress. Well, uh, thank you so much for giving me opportunity to be with you on the breakfast program of the of the TV. The Plus TV. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I serve as the World Congress Chairman in Ibom State, and I again serve as the Local Government Congress Chairman in Ibom State as a young person, and again I serve as the State Congress Chairman in Ibom State. And I knew the role I played in making sure that we have a successful Congress in that state, and I have the experience in the party politics. Uh, what I would like to say is that, you know, surely uh, APC is a formation of four legacy parties, and are then joined by new PDP uh, when we formed the party. And uh, the four legacies, like you rightly mentioned, the CPC, ACN, uh, uh, ANPP, and uh, uh, Abga. Abga partially, and again, new PDP joined us after the formation. And of course, when four political parties come together, of course, there, there will be a different ideas because all the parties came with their different idea, different way of thinking, different blueprints, and what have you. And at the end of the day, came together to harmonize their positions to win power in Nigeria in 2015, which by the special grace of God, we've succeeded in winning the election in 2015. And uh, of course, when you see the formation of even the government since 2015, it's an it's a all-inclusive all government where each and every party was given, in fact, people from all the, all the defunct political parties who are considered in the formation of the government. And again, when you look into the leadership, even in the National Assembly, same thing. When you look at the Senate President, Saraki, even, even in the Eighth Assembly, Saraki is from New PDP. Uh, uh, of course, the, even Dogara himself from New PDP. And again, the President is from CPC, and the Vice President is from ASEAN. And again, when you look at it, even the the, the the, in, the, in the 2019, after the 2019 election as well, when you see the speaker is ACN, the Senate President is ANPP, the Senate President is ANPP, and then the, the National Chairman of the party, Oshomole, is also ACN, and Mr. President is CPC. So that is how we've been, in fact, uh, governing the country, and uh, nobody can say this group of people are sidelined or so on, except the person have personal interests. And uh, of course, you know, in situation like this, whether one like it or not, you must you must expect 
misunderstanding among the, the stakeholders of the and uh, both the critical and non-critical stakeholders in the party. So, and ahead of the convention, the upcoming convention, I know that you know, of course, there are a lot of you know discussions going on in the country, both in the ANPP and the opposition parties. But the way things are going on, I know that we will, at the end of the day, we will conduct the Congress, um, the National Convention successfully, and the leadership will actually emerge. And uh, of course, it won't be like a different CPC affairs or either ACN affairs or ABGA or, or ANPP affairs, but definitely I, I came from Borno and we came from the background of the ANPP. And, uh, and uh, other people, of course, Borno, Yobe, and Zampara. Though Zampara, a little bit, you know, adds a little bit of distraction, went to a PDP and it, though the governor is now in APC. So, the, and uh, of course, the CP, ACN also, they had their own governors as at that time and so on. The CPC had, you know, Nasarawa, Almakura and so on. So the point is that the party is becoming more interesting. And that is why the gladiators are running for the national chairman of our great party. And uh, of course, at the right time, the party will come up with the blueprint of even the National Commission, maybe probably by this week. I, I'm not certain, but, but it may be next week, where the zoning formula might be out. I will have the committee, zoning, zoning formula committees will be out, and they will now strategize on the whole thing so that there will be no issues. Once they do the zoning, then the whole thing will now fall into the rightful places and uh, will conduct the, the National Convention by the grace of God successfully. So there is no, there will be no rancor. There will be no rancor by the grace of God, but prior, during, and after the national convention, as far as we are concerned in the ABC. All right, Honorable Sheriff Banki, uh, let's still stay with that because uh, there are a lot of quarters that have um, doubted the fact that there's a tendency that the 26th of February might not be very tentative for the party. Uh, due to some of the issues that surrounds it. For instance, uh, it's been said that uh, the date was actually picked just to um, make less of some of the controversies that are going on. And there's a lot of um, dissatisfaction with the Keteke committee and what have you. So, so what is really, really the possibility that the 26th of February will happen for the APC as her convention? See misunderstanding in politics is always natural and you can't run away from it whether one like it or not there must be superior arguments before every action takes place in in, in the political party and uh, the dates okay before now people are saying the national the caretaker committee doesn't want to conduct the congress or the convention or so on but now that they've fixed 26 and when you look at the scenario they, they fixed the convention what the, 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 the guideline of the exercise is clearly stated. They said they, they had to inaugurate the state chairman on third of February, which they did so, and that is that and that that was the beginning of the. And also they talk about the reconciliation. It started with the reconciliation, the submission of the report by the Abdullah Adamu Late Committee, the Reconciliation Committee, and then the inauguration of the caretaker chair uh, sorry the inauguration of the chairman elect in only that six days and the fct which with the exception of kano and sokoto they did of the remaining 35 already so uh, so and now the next thing is to release the subcommittees of the of the of the of the, of the national convention and of course every committee will be saddled with different responsibility. see this thing the whole thing is a, is a process that had to be followed one after the other. You cannot just stand up in the morning and say, I will go and go, go, go and rock Congress or either a national convention. And this process started right from the registration exercise of the party, and which we did so successfully. And again, uh, and again, you know, various elections took place, uh, various primary elections took place. As it is now, as it is now, there will be even election, uh, I think on 26th of this uh, of this month by either which one uh, uh, by elections in various states of either house of assembly rep or even senatorial elections in the country so the the 26 that the national working committee fix is still feasible but you know of course sometimes you may not uh, you know predict 
the what might be but if i am very much optimistic that even if the party suggested for maybe adjournment or maybe one or two weeks i would not be surprised i wouldn't be bothered because of, of having known the, the the difficulties in conducting a congress where you have to accommodate millions of people's interest you have to accommodate thousands of stakeholders interest every state have their own different peculiarity and of course the leadership thank god that the apc in a safer hand the national my malady our own caretaker committee national chairman of the party is doing his best and in fact the best thing that ever happened to APC is to have him as national chairman. If not for him, only God knows where our party will be at this point in time. So, uh, honestly, the party is well prepared and the party is doing its best to make sure that this co Congress, actually, uh, national convention actually take place on 26th of February. And be, me uh, being a member of the inner cycle in the APC, I am. I know that the National Caretaker Committee are so much interested and are doing everything humanly possible right. to beat the deadline. Okay. Uh, Although, uh, Sheriff Baki, it's interesting that you've said, you know, um, in response to Messi's question, that um, you know, you you looking forward to a peaceful and unified national convention of the party, and I'm happy that you informed us that you. Um, were one of those who supervised or superintended over um, the World Congresses in, in Aquabum State and the local government Congresses in Aquabum State. And I'm sure you may have been, I don't know, you may have been there for the state uh, 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 activity as well, where the state chairmen were elected. And I'm sure you know more than I do, more than I do that. Um, in Aquabum State, you had uh, a three parallel state chairmen, one from the Godsu Akbabio faction, uh, Senator Gosul Akbabio faction, former governor, one from the Senator Itainang faction, and one from the Senator John Akbao Doedega faction, who himself is the secretary of this Ketaka and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. Three, sir, three state chairmen. And Akbabio himself was kicking when the state chairman were inaugurated at Buhari House in Abuja uh, last week. You know, apart from Aquabum State, you have other states. Uh, Kayamo is has been kicking because his own, you know, block lost out. His faction lost out. Uh, Magnus Abbey in River State has been kicking. Um, Lai Mohammed has been kicking. Arabe Shola has been kicking. I can mention some more names. Um, how can the APC surmount this? Um, let's not let's not let's not ignore let this. Me, let me let me start. Uh, let me tell you something. When you say faction. It's only in a situation where the committee members are splitted. Some, in fact, and attended different congresses. That is when you now call there's a faction in that particular state. And uh, if all the seven committee members went to one venue and conduct the congress without any one of them going to attend a, any other congress that would might take place or either took place in that state there's no congress there's no faction in that state and uh, besides as the chairman of the world local government and state congress in that state i did not see anywhere a factional congress took place in that state and uh, in fact during the world congress myself and my committee members have supervised thoroughly went around all the local governments and i in fact assigned my committee members to in to, to each of the geopolitical zones uh, in aquai bomb said they could have been a senatorial district and again a uh, senatorial district which they did so and the people came out in mass we have all the evidences the videos and what have you and in fact even our party is using aquai bomb state congress as one of the best congress that was conducted and they are using it as a justification so uh, i am very very you know uh, very happy with the way and manner we conducted the congress in that state the other facts the people you talk about i don't even know where where their own congress took place in that state because i was there throughout in the state and the congress that i conducted the INEC, the police the dss all of them were in attendance they were in fact they all wrote and in fact they even wrote a letter of commendation to us uh, and to our party of, on the way and manner we conducted the congresses and uh, and again secondly of course like i said earlier you can't run away from you know from uh, 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 
misunderstanding in the political party. Of course, most of these people but they want to dominate the whole thing. And uh, if the thing did not favor them, they will just come out and start you know, making all sorts of lies against people. They will start saying that so and so person have hijacked this, this and that. Okay, the man that you talk about, uh, for instance now, the Senator John Appan that you talk about, who is the National Secretary of the caretaker right now, he, he ran for governorship election in 2011 in Aquaibom State. He ran for governorship election in 2015. He ran for governorship election again in 2019. And uh, apart from 2011, he was never given a ticket in under the political party. And now, by the grace of God, he's the national secretary of the party. And and open everything, open the way and manner he was castigated in the party and so on. He never bothered to leave the party. He remained in the APC. And most of these people that you mentioned now, are beneficiaries of what the national secretary himself but but but, 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 but you, you're saying Akwano Doha they have remained in the APC um Sheriff Banki okay. um Magnus Abe also remained in the APC but we are well aware <laughs> of, of what happened in River State in 2019 where your party did not appear on the like ballot I said, every state have its own peculiarity River State issue is different from that of Akwaibo State and when you go to Rivers you will okay in every state the minister, where there is no governor in that state of the APC, the minister is the leader of that party. Did Magnus Abe acknowledge that? This should be number one. And secondly, and secondly, what happened in 2019? APC doesn't even have candidate in, the, in that election. And what happened? Because of the misunderstanding between Magnus Abe and Amici, and Magnus Abe went to court and up to the Supreme Court and ensured that there's no candidate for ABC in that state. And now Congress was held. And of course, because of the way and manner, well, because of what they went through in the last uh, convention, this time around they had to do the needful. They had to follow all the political sides. They have to follow all the standard, the rules and the, the guideline of the exercise and making sure that they conduct the, uh, the peaceful, free and fair congresses, which they did so. And the party acknowledged the Congress committee went to that state. After that, the appeal committee went there and affirmed what the, the, the Congress that was held by this, the, the, the committee. And again, the National Working Committee also adopted the report of the Congress uh, committee and also that of the appeal committee from that state. So what is again, and again, the party set up a National Reconciliation Committee, which headed by the former governor of Nasarawa State, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, to go around, and they went around and they, they received reports from both angles, uh, from both quarters in all the states where there are grievances. And uh, of course, they made their position and submitted their report to the party, National Working Committee members. And they looked into all these things. With the exception of Kano and Sokoto, like I told you earlier, there, there is no faction in anywhere in this country. And the party is doing its best now. The national chairman of the party now took charge of the, even the reconciliation in those two states. They are trying to make a compromise where they can bring both factions together to form a unity escorts starting from the world up to the state level in those states. So it's not something that is new that is happening in the APC. This thing is always bound to happen. Whenever there is Congress, definitely some people will become aggrieved. I or like assuming now, uh, I ran for election in 2019, and, uh, and all of us that could not get the ticket in 2019, we had our own forum. We call it APC Aspirants Forum, which by the grace of God, I'm the national secretary of that forum. And uh, why did we, why do you think we come together? Just to understand ourselves, comes together and be a block in the APC and channel our grievances to do the rightful direction. And Mr. President had to even organize a dinner to us and appeal to us, come to us, come to us and give us the reason why we should remain in the party and also go around the country and reconcile the aggrieved aspects to have a holistic reconciliation nationwide. Being all of us as victims, victims of even, I may say, some of us of injustice in some states. And uh, because okay. it's we that talks to ourselves. Honorable Sherry Banki, let, let's also look at this report that we have in front of us. It feels like it's an issue of consensus, especially for the position of the national chairman of the party. So we have reports saying that your party, the APC, you have stakeholders, including members and loyalists of the party, who have thrown their weight behind uh, the Senate Service Committee, Senator Sani Musa, uh, for the position of uh, national chairman. 
I mean, of course, we're looking at your convention that you say would definitely happen on the 26th. How are you taking it and how are other members of the party, I mean, taking this position? See, in the North Central alone, we have, yes, of course, we have the Sani Musa senator from Niger State. Uh, we have Senator Tanku Almakura, a former governor of Nasrawa State. We have Mustafa Saliu from uh, from Para State, former deputy national chairman of CPC. Uh, again, we have uh, Mohamed Esu from Niger. Uh, in the North Central, again, uh, I think there's another person that also came out, which I cannot recall his name. Uh, in other zones, also, we have other people that are running for that same position. Uh, and the, the point is... Uh, when you see some people are saying consensus for Sani Musa, some interest group are calling for him to be given that opportunity for their own interests as well. In politics, of course, whether one like it or not, there are different group of interest in the party. Uh, and again, that are clamoring for their own choice of candidate. But, you know, of course, the party will want at first, we'll want to have a consensus. And if the consensus did not succeed, that is when we will now have the election. Even though whether there is a consensus or elect whatever, you must do the voting. You must elect the leaders through ballot papers. So we'll do so. But the consensus also is on the table as it is now. But the party did not decide it on anybody as it is now officially. So, so you said that the party has not uh, thrown its weight behind Sani Musa? No, the party, no, the party did not do that. If the party will do that, I, I am in a better position to know that. And in fact, the party did not even do its zoning. How come? The party did not even do its zoning. And even if they do that, critical stakeholders must come together from each and every state in Nigeria. And especially if the position is zoned to the north, the national chairman, they have to come together and then, and then decide on who, whom they will, you know, they give their support. So as it is now, the party did not in any way throw its you know, support to any of the candidates among those that are running for this position. Mm. So what modes of ele uh, what pattern would the party be adopting? You say, I mean, you are in a very better position to give us information. So uh, would the party be adopting, you know, the consensus, direct or indirect primaries for this election? Like I say, party will always our own party believe in managing crisis reducing so much stress and do you know of course we have leaders with wisdom in the party starting from the president downward and uh, of course they will never want to create any rancor in the party they will first suggest the suggest the consensus and if the consensus is not you know is, is not realistic or either feasible they will of course go for the election and when they go for the election the winner will take it and that is as simple as abc that is simple as abc just like even primary election the party will prefer consensus and if the, the consensus will not take place will not it's not realistic or maybe it's not accepted to the stakeholders they will now go for the election because election is always second option um, um, what is the, your, your position on this um, uh, clamor by the CPC bloc in the party to produce the next national chairman? You know, um, they seem to be, you know, concerned that um, President Buhari exiting next year, um, power might, might might fall on an ACN bloc member of the party as, as presidential candidate, and um, they need something to to keep themselves relevant in the party. Um, you are from AMPP. Um, uh, uh, John Odige Oyegun was, was, was chairman of the party. He is also from the AMPP bloc. So this clamor by the uh, uh, CPC bloc to produce a national chairman, what are your thoughts on this? Because we hear the ACN is really uh, also trying to get that position as well. Well, uh, the, like I said earlier, uh, as for me, when you ask me a, a personal you know. Opinion, I will tell you, I always look at competency, capacity, you know, uh, of an individual. Uh, you know, I always use use these two, you know, cardinal points as a yardstick, you know, to choose a leader. And uh, of course, like I told you, of course, there will be a different interest in a political party. A lot of people will come out, uh, like now, there are some people that are saying they want ACN to be chairman. And again, just like the way you mentioned, there are some people that want the CPC also to hold that position. And like I told you, 
when you look at the composition of the government, you will understand that the president himself is SCA, is, is CPC. The vice president is SCN. Yes. I, 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 I guess. I guess what I'm asking you, sorry to, to interrupt you there, is is do you think the CPC um, it, 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 would you agree with them when they say it's their turn to produce the national chairman? No. The point is that, like I told you, I'm a true believer of our of APC of a party and a loyal party member. Whatever that our stakeholders agreed, I will follow it hundred percent. And I, 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 as for me, like I told you, my loyalty is to the party and to the president. Whatever direction that Mr. President and our, our party gives, that's where I will belong to. I'm a follower of the party. So the point is, like I said, though there is yes, of course, I acknowledge that there is agitation from the CPC that they want somebody from the CPC to become the chairman of the party, you know. Uh, 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 but of course, we cannot forget about the competency, capacity, and what have you that actually needed to pilot the affairs of the party. You know, in the history of Nigeria, nobody in either ANPP, in between the ANPP or either, uh, so, sorry, in between the PDP and the APC, that ever spent four years as a national chairman apart from John Oyegun. If that is in most cases you see somebody becomes chairman after one or two years some even less than that some after three years they will be removed from this position and and a national chairman needed somebody with so much wisdom somebody that is very accommodative somebody that is extremely patient somebody that is, is a very good listener somebody that always makes stand for the you know for people that doesn't have you know, uh, vulnerable people in the political party and somebody that can always tell the truth to the power where it's supposed to be. And these are the kind of the person that we wanted. I can't just say I want this somebody, that this person come from this party or this side of the party and so on. So that's my position all the time. And, and I tell people wherever I go. So, so would you be saying that the APC is looking for a consensus candidate? Ahead of this of election. Course, if, if, if consensus is realistic and feasible, the party will definitely go for consensus. But if we realize that it may create problem or rancor in the party, we will allow it. Everybody, everybody will just go for his election and then the leader, the chairman will emerge. All right. This issue of um, uh, uh, delegates lists is also a contentious one. Um, You've acknowledged that there are factions, or you, you've not. You said they are not factions, as far as you're concerned. But there, are, there are agitations. There are, there are splits, you know, um, within within the party in different states. Um, um, what are, what's your thought on on the the, the belief that um, the, the next fight is going to be about the delegates list? Um, has that been sorted out already? Are we going to be seeing um, maybe governors trying to control who becomes delegate? Are we going to be seeing maybe political appointees trying to control who becomes a lipid? Or even national assembly members who have been on a coalition course with the governors as far as the, um, uh, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is concerned? The delegates are already elected okay. during the Congress that we did, we conducted. Uh, during the World Congress we conducted, 10 delegates were elected. During the Local Government Congress, the three national delegates were elected. And who are the members of the dele who are the delegates, the national convention delegates? Who are they? The three national delegates, the chairman and secretary of a political party of a local government, the all the state working committee members of the party, the statutory delegates, the likes of the, the speaker, the zone principal officers in states of the party, those are in the party. And again, the principal of the, 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 the members of the House of Representatives elect both present and former ones. These are people that are known already. It is not something that you just come and, you know, concoct or uh, maybe or sit down and write list of names, you know, uh, names of a uh, new delegate or something. These are people that were duly elected by the, their people at their respective local governments. In only 774 local governments, we have three delegates, coupled with the chairman and secretaries of those local governments. So it's not a new thing. It's not something that somebody can sit at the comfort of his zone to write a list and say, these are the, the delegates of the party. It's not done this way. 
do, do, do you yeah, expect do you expect the issue of um uh, the ypm uh the young progressive movement uh that came up with uh, prince uh, Musa Faudu and his 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 uh, factional uh, uh, or parallel executive to pop up again, or is that issue done and dusted with? When when you look at it, you know uh, I'm a young man, and I don't believe in what they did. The point is that most in most cases, when you see some people acting different way, you may just say, "Oh, they are also an interest group." Like I said, I'm a very loyal party man. My loyalty is to the party and to the president. So the point is that what happened? Last week they went to the court themselves and withdrew their case. If you are aware, they did so. Why did they withdraw that? They said since the convention date has been fixed and you know, of course, they want peace and so and so on. That was what they, that, that was their own reason of doing that. So you can imagine, you know, and they also realized, you know, you know, you are their mistakes. So the point is when you a true believer of, a, of your own political party and actually want your party to succeed, you will never want to create rancor or misunderstanding. There are a lot of court judgments that favored the present composition of the National Caretaker Committee led by uh, Maimala himself, the governor Maimala, His Excellency. So, and why will you go contrary to this position? You can't you can succeed. You can't succeed at all. So the point is, the party is very much safe under the leadership of Governor Maimala of your best states. It's very much safe. That is why, as you can see, a lot of people from other political parties joined us in the party, especially three sitting governors that join us. The governor of Zamfara State, the governor of Cross River State, and governor, a Wokohali governor in Ebony State. So, and in fact, Maimala laid a very solid foundation to whoever that will emerge as the national chairman of our party. And it's going to be a challenge to whoever that will emerge as the chairman of the party. Because he have to perform more than the national the, the, the Maimala. Otherwise people will underrate him. Otherwise people will not appreciate what the person, uh, the, the chairman will actually do. A lot of members of the National Assembly, both in the Red Chamber and the Green Chamber, join us in the APC because of the exemplary leadership of the national chairman of the party. And again, a lot of members of the State House of Assembly in various states join us in the APC. So many big wigs in the PDP or other political parties also join us in the in the APC as it is now. So what is, is, it, is it not better for us to commend the party? And if there's any issue, any problem, there's a right channel to address that channel. You can't just be on the media to castigate your leaders, to castigate your party, try to destroy your political party, and also claim that you are a member of that political party, or either someone that actually wanted the success of your political party. It doesn't make sense at all. Mm. Well, some of the concerns that has been raised, especially, you know, with uh, the movement, like you have said, and you have described them as an interest group. One of the issues they've talked about is the fact that youths are not being carried along. They talked about not taking young people along in, you know, the party has not quite considered and factored the young people and that they had the mandate of the president. I mean, what the president said, young people should take over and uh, do exploits. And so it was based on this premise, but it's quite interesting to see that all of this is uh, panning out for the party, even though some persons have actually doubted uh, uh, with the interest group and all of the issues that are going on lingering in the party, the, uh, the visibility and the possibility of your party to have the elections on the 26th. But fingers across, uh, let's see how things actually pan out for you. We do appreciate your time on the show, Honorable Sheriff Banky. Thank you so much for being thank, part of the thank conversation. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. But before I go, I would like to tell you, I'm a young man. I'm less than 40 <laughs> years. I'm just well, seven years maybe you old. might just be in... But, in yes, but, but yes, I'm a young man, but serve as the chairman of World Congress in Akwaibom, serve as chairman of Local Government Congress, serve as chairman of State Congress, and I performed wonderfully well. Go to Akwaibom and to the street, ask the core APC members in that state of what I did. 
So I am so much proud of myself. I am proud of what I did. And as a young man, I set a very good example to my own fellow young men in, and women in Nigeria, fellow young men in, uh, in Nigeria. So the point is how you look at it, how you look at it and how you fail it. You can't just say the party is not considering young men. There are a lot of young men and women that work, in fact, that serve in the party during the last congresses. So how can I say the party is not concerning, uh, it doesn't have concern about the young people? I would never just say so. Honorable Sheriff Banky, we have to let you go now. Thank you so much for making our time to be part of the breakfast this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, quite interesting, and uh, uh, we'll be watching, of course, um, the PDP had thrown a gauntlet, gauntlet to the APC to say, uh, we dare you to organize a national convention. Um, we'll be watching that and see how it goes on 26th. There's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa ahead. We have more discussions coming up. Stay with us.